What is Pluton? And how did it end up buried deep beneath Wano? And while we're down there, how did the craftsmen of Wano ever manage to transport all those huge poneglyphs around the world without getting caught? Well, those questions are exactly what we're here to talk about today. And if you followed the channel for a while, then you probably know where I'm going to go with at least some of this. But for the sake of all my new viewers, I am going to recap the highlights of those videos. But as usual, I promise there's a ton of new information as well. Anyway, onto the theory. Bad. Yeah. One of the first things that we need to tackle with this theory is what Pluton is. And while we've been told that it's a battleship of some kind, the term ship is more wide ranging than you think. I mean, Frankie basically told us that it's just no longer a ship when it can't take you to the next island. So if something can take you to the next island, then there's no reason why it can't be considered a ship. And another example of this is the sea train, which was called a paddle ship by Tom or San Juan Wolf, who is literally known as the Colossal Battleship. So I want you to go into this theory being as open-minded as possible, because my theory of what Pluton is was really the hallmark of my channel until you guys gave my last few videos some serious love. So I don't think that many of you have heard this one before. So part of why I'm here today is to convince you why Pluton is definitely a mole. Whether this is a mechanically modified mole, a mole that just pulls something behind it, or simply a ship with a mole fruit is still to be determined. But what I can tell you is that a ship with the name of the god of the underworld should definitely be able to dig underground, just like where Pluton rests today. And isn't it weird that Sukiyaki claimed that Pluton was sleeping or at rest in the official? That immediately implies that it could be alive. And what creature does a better job of digging than a mole? If Poseidon is supposed to be the god of the sea and very directly correlates to that, I think it's safe to say that Uranus, the god of the sky, and Pluton, the god of the underworld, should also be in their respective places as well. And we've already seen a mole that can dig under the sea and transport people island to island just fine. And his name was the legendary boss of the earth. And he was found on Ukari Island, which is home to various hot springs. We met him during Gadatsu's cover story, where they piloted this mole and had it dig them under the sea all the way to Alabasta. This immediately shows that a mole can take you island to island. Island. And to be honest, digging under the sea is likely the safest way to do so. That means that nobody will even see you traveling, and you can also avoid any erratic weather or tides. And what's extra interesting about this mole is his helmet. His helmet not only has the traditional Japanese sun on it, but the exact image of Mount Fuji that we saw in Wano as well. How could a mole all the way near Alabasta possibly have a helmet with an image from Wano? At some point, someone who knew what Wano looked like would have had to design the helmets for the moles to use. But one of the best pieces of evidence for the mole theory is actually one of Wano's ports, namely Mogura port, which means mole port in Japanese. This is the one that used a pulley system to pull ships from essentially old Wano up to new Wano so that ships didn't need to climb the dangerous waterfall. What's unique about this port is that it's the only one that goes all the way down to old Wano, right above where Pluton is today. And if you look back at the timeline of Wano's borders and how it filled up with water, you can see that the settlement up top that we saw throughout the arc wasn't there at first. They built that settlement after the walls were put up because they were being flooded with fresh water due to the newly constructed borders, which means that they probably didn't even bother building that port until right after the walls were built, so that way they could start taking people, livestock, and building materials up to the top and build the settlement that we're familiar with today. So this mole port is definitely the most interesting of all of them because it literally has to be the oldest one. So old that it was likely built right after the void century and when the walls were put up. And I think the people of that time knew what creature beneath them, so they just named the port after the very creature that necessitated the port's creation in the first place, the mole. And as I said a moment ago, in Japanese, the word mole is pronounced mogura, but another meaning of mogura is earth dragon. And given the volcanic eruption that we saw in Wano, and the fact that Mount Fuji is a massive volcano that is even on the mole's helmets, I think that earth dragon could be an important name. If Pluton is tied to a devil fruit, I like the idea that 
that it's a model of the Mogu Mogu no Mi, which Miss Merry Christmas had in Alabasta, which is another weird mole and Alabasta connection, by the way, except that it's a mythical Mogu Mogu no Mi, and it's the model Mogra. One way that it could be read is mole mole fruit model mole, but the true way would be mole mole fruit model earth dragon, which would of course give this mole some type of lava abilities. And while I love that option and I think it's totally possible, especially considering the fact that Wano is home to sea stone creation and Pluton having a devil fruit would just be a natural explanation for why Wano is the perfect place to keep it contained, I do think it's more likely that Pluton is just a giant mole that was actually modified at Water 7 and then controlled in some way. And I'll get right back to that in just a moment. Because first, there's one last thing that I need to bring up about the mole. And that is this panel from the Alabasta Poneglyph Crypt. And I want to give a quick shout out to another YouTuber named Gintone for sending this over my way, so go make sure to show his channel some love. But in this panel, we can see a number of images on the walls but I want to focus on these three. As we all likely remember, this crypt is where Robin learned of Pluton's location. And given that Alabasta was even one of the original 20 kingdoms, and the royal palace of Alubarna dates back almost 4,000 years, which is long before the Void Century, I don't think it's a surprise that even more information on the ancient weapons could be hidden here. And I think that these three images may just be images of the ancient weapons themselves. And on the left-hand side would have to be Poseidon, and while that image is the hardest to see of all of them, there is a lot of sea or fish imagery on that side of the crypt, so I think Poseidon makes sense there. And then the top looks roughly like a dragon, with the very typical long mustache and even potentially these flame cloud symbols underneath, which we know dragons in One Piece use to fly. And since it's at the top and Uranus is the god of the sky, this all lines up, especially when considering Roger's egg on his ship. I do have a lot more to say about that, but I'm going to save it for a future video. So make sure to take a quick second and click the subscribe button so you don't miss out when that video drops. And then on the bottom right would be none other than Pluton. So I took the liberty of modernizing this image in Microsoft Paint and look what we have here. Does that not look exactly like a mole that's chained up between two walls and under a mountain that could definitely be taken for Mount Fuji? I'm sure there's some of you that are questioning my sanity or just assuming that there's just a lot of confirmation bias going on here, but it really does make perfect sense since Sukiyaki told us that opening the borders would require destroying the walls, and that would unleash Pluton. Given all that I've already said about Pluton probably being a mole, this image with something attached to two walls is at least worth a second look given all the extra context that we now have. By having Momonosuke command Zenisha to destroy the walls, Pluton would no longer be chained up and would be free. So this factor alone likely means that the borders were put up not only to avoid a flood, as I mentioned in my Void Century video, which I'm going to leave a link for down below, but also to chain up Pluton underneath them. And this context would imply that Pluton was around before the Void Century started, and then something necessitated hiding it and locking it away by putting up the walls. So if Pluton was around before the Void Century, then what could possibly make the Ancient Kingdom, or Wano specifically, need to lock Pluton away? way like that. The walls may have been to avoid a flood, or at least to keep out intruders, but Pluton is a different story. Why did it need to be locked up at all? It's as if they couldn't use it or control it anymore, so it needed to be stopped until a future time where it could then be controlled again. So basically what I'm saying is I think that there's an individual that can control Pluton, much like Shirahoshi controls the Sea Kings, and that person probably died or was going to die, so they had to park Pluton under Wano for about 800 years, and the fact that it's parked underground and trapped within the walls aids even more credence to the idea that Pluton is a mole, or at least something that can dig. I mean, a normal ship doesn't get to hide so far underground that easily, nor would a cloud, like Parvision brought up in his own Pluton video, which I'm definitely leaving a link for down below, because even if I do think Pluton is a mole, I can promise you that his idea is going to be important in some form or fashion, so go check it out after this. And much like we saw with Poseidon 
Shira Hoshi, I think somebody that's alive in the current story is able to control Pluton, and that's why Momonosuke is waiting to open the borders. Until Pluton can be controlled, what's really the benefit of destroying the borders? It seems like part of the reason that Odin wanted to destroy the walls was to welcome Joy Boy when the time comes. But given that Momo apparently knows Luffy is Joy Boy, thanks to what they're teaching their students in Wano history class, I think he knows that there's no use in opening the borders until Pluton can properly be controlled. They might as well just play it safe until the perfect time. And this great decision making is part of why I absolutely love Momonosuke as a character. And personally, I think there are three options worth discussing for this person that can control Pluton. The first is Vivi, who is my top choice, but I also think Isa from Skypea and Momonosuke could all be potential options. Vivi is an obvious candidate because she is clearly an important character in general, now technically being the queen of Alabasta, even though she's apparently been kidnapped by Emu. I think Emu knows that Vivi can control one of the ancient weapons, so that's why she's been kidnapped, which may tie all the way back to the fact that Alabasta is the only kingdom not to go to Marijua, but Vivi is also from the kingdom that held the Pluton Poneglyph, which ties her to Pluton specifically. However, Poseidon's location and abilities were revealed on the Skypea Poneglyph, where Isa lives, but Isa obviously doesn't have the powers of Poseidon. So in that sense, Vivi controlling Pluton would kind of break the trend since she lived near the Poneglyph. So if we try to fit all of this within the trend that we already have with Poseidon, then somebody in Wano should technically be controlling Pluton since they were born where the Poneglyph pointed them. And that is what makes Momonosuke a very logical choice, along with the fact that he can control Zunisha already who unleashes Pluton. But we have to remember that Pluton is a mole. And the legendary boss of the Earth that we saw in Gadatsu's cover story was found near and inside Alabasta, where Vivi is from. And if Pluton is a mole that can dig through the Earth and was ultimately just parked at Wano, as I mentioned earlier, maybe Pluton was born or originated from Alabasta, but then was modified by the ancient shipwrights of Water 7, like Iceberg mentioned, which I'll cover more in detail soon. But this could all explain why there's a bunch of moles near Alabasta today, and might even tell us why they have Wano-themed helmets. I mean, it's also weird that it's on a helmet of all things. I mean, sure, it's meant to protect their head while they dig and everything, but from a symbolic perspective, that essentially makes the mole wearing it under Mount Fuji since he's wearing the hat on top of his head. Maybe it's like a symbol that all of the moles wear to honor their true big mole boss that they've all been waiting for. Much like the sea kings and whales have been waiting for the two sovereigns. And when we met that boss of the earth, the cover said, I unexpectedly awakened the legendary boss of the earth. And if Pluton is sleeping or at rest underground, just as Sukiyaki said, then it's probably waiting to be awakened as well. Thanks again to Matt Cypher on Discord for helping out as usual, and for becoming my very first member on the channel. I also want to thank Lol Sauce McGee and Good Vibrations for becoming members too. And if you're interested in doing so, make sure to click the join button down below. But if Pluton existed before the Void Century, and then was only locked up because they couldn't control it for a while, why did the Ancient Kingdom create it in the first place, and what was it even used for? Iceberg told us that Pluton was built by the ancient shipwrights of Water 7, who could have very well lived in the sunken city that Water 7 is built on top of. So what was the purpose of a weapon like this? Well, much like we learned with Frankie during Water 7 with Tom, weapons are only weapons when you use them for that purpose. If you create a battleship capable of destroying an island, it's only a weapon if you use it as such. You could use a battleship as a normal ship if you just ride it to the next island, so I think every ancient weapon was used for a more peaceful and meaningful purpose purpose by the ancient kingdom, but their name has been misconstrued by the government and maybe even the ancient kingdom to hide their true purpose. I mean, look at Shirahoshi. Is she an ancient weapon? Yes, but she's also a big crybaby mermaid. Is Pluton an ancient weapon? Yes, but maybe he's also a big friendly mole that just wants to dig his friends around the world, and that's what he did for the ancient kingdom. When Roger went to Fishman Island, Odin said that he didn't even know Poseidon would be a mermaid. So given that context, we really don't know what Pluton could be, and anything that we've read on the Poneglyphs wouldn't even really say exactly what he is. And I think Pluton was used by the Ancient Kingdom for a similar purpose 
to the sea train that Tom built. You see, Tom knew what Pluton looked like because he held the blueprints for so long, and his offer to build a sea train was what kept him from being thrown in prison by the world government for building the Oro Jackson. That's because a sea train obviously offers a huge advantage by providing a reliable and fast way to travel and trade goods over long distances. The Grand Line is not easy to travel through, but the sea train made it so they could safely travel anytime, even during Agua Laguna. And what did Tom's original sea train, the Rocket Man, look like? A mole. I mean, technically it was designed to look like a shark, but doesn't this also look eerily similar to the moles that we've seen in One Piece? It could be that Tom wanted to mimic the effects of Pluton from the Ancient Kingdom, except Pluton went one step further and did so on an underground railroad. See, traveling over the sea and on train tracks is a novel idea and definitely an improvement over normal sea travel, but traveling underground is even better. And given that Pluton is named after the god of the underworld, it would just be a natural fit. And the reason that Tom could only do it over the sea is that in order to do it underground, you have to dig, which is where the mole comes into play. We know that Pluton was built by the ancient shipwrights of Water 7, but here I am also claiming that it was a mole born in Alabasta. So how can both of those things be true? Well, there's a couple options. First and foremost, Pluton could be a modified mole, much like how Laboon was modified to live inside of. The mole from Alabasta had his helmet modified to let Gadatsu and his friend ride inside, so we have precedents already that this is possible. Or alternatively, the mole just pulls along a cart along the train tracks, and that combo is what Pluton is. Similar to how Poseidon is really just the combo of Shirahoshi and the Sea Kings. Imagine a sea train, except it's pulled along by a mole who digs tunnels for it. This would let the Ancient Kingdom transport massive amounts of people in a safe and quick way. Traveling through the planet so you're going directly from point A to point B is way faster than any other means, especially if you establish a pre-built underground railroad of sorts, like the tunnel in Alabasta that buses people to Ukari Island. Basically, I think the Ancient Kingdom built Pluton so that everyone could travel around the world safely and quickly by going underground, but it may have also been used to create and destroy unnecessary islands, which ties to how Pluton can destroy an island in a single blast. See, we just saw in Wano that a volcanic eruption can be caused by digging large holes, like the ones that were created by Big Mom and Kaido. And these eruptions could probably be large enough to even destroy an entire island. So if Pluton could dig into or around these pockets of magma, they can likely trigger eruptions and destroy islands that they don't need, like maybe the Red Line for example. But I think the Ancient Kingdom used Pluton for another purpose as well, like to create islands. But in typical world government fashion, they tend to focus on the evil side to it, like destroying islands, so that they could brand Pluton as a weapon. And see, Nami explained to us that there are more volcanoes under the sea than there are on land, and that eruptions under the sea are how new islands are made in the first place. That means that triggering eruptions under the sea can create a brand new island for people to live on, or even destroy an island that people are already living on. It's a perfect example of how weapons are only weapons if you use them as such. And if Pluton really did establish an underground railroad of sorts throughout the planet, I think that answers the question of how Wano craftsmen were able to transport all those huge poneglyphs around the planet without being seen after the Void Century. See, we were told that the stones were transported after the Void Century ended, right around the 800 year mark, which makes sense because they had to write the events on the poneglyphs, so of course it had to be afterward. And every samurai that we have seen sucks at sailing a ship because they never leave the country. And even if they did sail around, the world government would have definitely caught them since there were like 30 poneglyphs they were taking around. So what if there was a pre-established network of tunnels that let them transport these stones safely? And maybe establishing this whole tunnel network and then ending that at Wano, where Pluton is today, was all part of the plan. Because then Wano could take that tunnel that Pluton used to get there and then travel all around the world delivering 
the stones. Sort of like how the boss of the earth in Alabasta made a permanent tunnel from Alabasta to Akari Island that people now use to travel through. And obviously this has ties to the Underground Railroad here in the United States that helped slaves escape to free states secretly. Except in this version, it's the oppressed people of Wano, and the planet generally speaking, who are secretly escaping to their allied nations who banded together so that they can now protect the true history and make the world more free in the future. And if Pluton truly made a type of underground network that allowed the ancient kingdom to travel quickly and safely, then it definitely fulfills the criteria of being a ship because it would get you island to island safer and quicker than any other type of ship in existence. But now it's time to tie this all back to what you saw on the thumbnail and why you guys probably clicked this in the first place, and that is Vegapunk. What could Vegapunk possibly have to do with Pluton in this crazy underground network? Well, as you can imagine, it has to do with what we learned in the last few chapters, which are 1065 and 1066. Vegapunk told us that the reason everything on Egghead seems like it's from far in the future is because it's from an advanced civilization of the past. A civilization that was already 500 years in the future, but was seemingly wiped out and then reset. But oddly enough, Vegapunk seems to have retained the same level of intellect from that society of 900 years ago. So how would that be possible? He seems to be from the Longhead race, and his head just continues to grow with his knowledge, and while we have seen Longheads before, like Fukurokujo, and the Jolly Roger of the Space Pirates as well, which is super interesting, I think it's clear that Vegapunk is a tier above everyone else in terms of intellect. He even complained that there were no competent engineers in the world to fulfill his projects. He was so smart that he was specifically stated to be like he was from 500 years in the future, just like Egghead Island, which we know is already from the past. So what if that's all because Vegapunk himself is from that advanced ancient kingdom of the past? But much like Toki, he was sent forward in time due to some reason that we don't fully understand yet, but I'm sure it would have to be to avoid whatever happened in the Void Century. I wouldn't even be surprised if the man had his own access to a time machine using the lineage factors of Toki's fruit, but we know that Vegapunk Vegapunk has been around for a long time, going all the way back to Mads, and he was supposedly from Baltimore Island originally. So how would he be from the past with all those things being true? Well, this is where Frankie ties in, because Frankie obviously has some type of deep connection to Vegapunk, whether it be the fact that they're both engineers, they use a similar naming scheme for their creations, or the fact that they both spent significant time on Baltimore. And Frankie's past is pretty mysterious. He was abandoned in Water 7 by his parents, who were pirates. So what if Vegapunk was abandoned as a child in Baltimore, maybe by his parents who were space pirates? I mean, Toki was going forward in time all by herself, so Vegapunk being sent forward by himself is also a possibility. If he was sent forward as a child, or maybe his parents simply went forward in time and then birthed him afterward, then this would all make perfect sense. Much like Frankie was a child in Water 7 that had a natural talent for shipbuilding, Vegapunk was probably a child in Baltimore who had a natural talent for engineering. But obviously, due to Vegapunk's lineage and connections to the Ancient Kingdom, he was doing stuff that nobody else considered possible, as if he was from 500 years in the future. And if Vegapunk is a longhead, which may be an entirely new race and maybe even one of the ones that Big Mom does not have in her kingdom, maybe his parents did so to protect their lineage, much like when Toki went forward and then ended up having Momonosuke, who is somehow the only person to control Zunisha. The Ancient Kingdom may have basically had their own version of the Nine Red Sky scabbers to send forward and help bring the dawn. And one of them being a member of the family of geniuses just makes perfect sense. And that idea is how Pluton is connected to all of this. Obviously Frankie's mentor Tom built the sea train, which as I mentioned may just be a dumbed down version of Pluton, despite it being an engineering feat in its own right. And if Vegapunk is loosely supposed to be a much more advanced version of Frankie, given all the connections that I've laid out already, what if their mentors had the same thing going on? Meaning that Vegapunk's mentor, or maybe just one of his parents or something, had a hand in creating the original Pluton. We know that Pluton was created by the ancient shipwrights of Water 7, and possibly in the sunken city beneath Water 7, the same city that we didn't see in the entire arc that we had there, nor did we see it in Roger's speed run of the Grand Line with Odin, despite the fact that they did stop there. Why does Oda continue to not show us what that city looks like, and why would Roger stop in Water 7 if he was just looking for road poneglyphs unless he thought something important might be there. He had a year left and was trying to become Pirate King, so he 
had to have a reason for stopping here with Odin other than saying hello to everybody. And I think it's because that city is probably highly advanced, like the ancient kingdom which we learned about in chapter 1065 and chapter 1066. And if Oda showed us that advanced city underwater seven sooner, then we'd have pieced a lot of things together a lot sooner. And if that place built Pluton of all things, then that city itself was probably extremely advanced. Imagine all of Water 7 being like Egghead. It was probably the most advanced city of all in the entire kingdom, to be honest. Pluton is something that Frankie didn't even know was real or could be built by humans. And if it was built in that city under Water 7, then you can just imagine how advanced that city had to be. And the person who built it was probably Vegapunk's mentor, meaning that Vegapunk's version of Tom built the original Pluton and the Pluton blueprints. And by sending Vegapunk to the future and meeting Frankie, it kind of completes that entire cycle so that maybe Frankie can carry the will of those ancient shipwrights of Water 7. And let's talk about those blueprints just a little bit, the ones that were said to be a counter to the weapon specifically, because there were also moments where it seemed like the blueprints could be for the weapon itself. And what if I told you that's because Oda just thinks he's super slick and the blueprints were simply both the weapon and the counter. As in those blueprints have both the schematics to the actual Pluton itself, but also provide a way to counter the so-called ancient weapon. When Frankie first saw the blueprints, he asked if it was real and if humans could even build it. And obviously the back of them just straight up say Pluton. The context very much seems to imply that the actual Pluton itself is shown on there. But Frankie and Iceberg both told us that an opposing force had to be created and that's why the blueprints are being passed forward. So I can see an argument for there just being a special type of weapon or something that destroys Pluton on there as well. But we know that Oda loves his parallels and his funny ones at that, so let's look at this a different way. If Vegapunk is truly a lot like Frankie, and probably even his mentor who may have built Pluton in the first place, they probably had similar tendencies. And what was one of the most memorable things in Vegapunk's lab during Frankie's time in Baltimore? That stupid ass self-destruct button. Vegapunk put an entire self-destruct button in his lab for some reason, and while it seems utterly stupid in an overall sense, and probably is, Vegapunk is a genius, so it likely does have some practical purpose, like destroying things so that they don't get into the wrong hands, or so that he can shut things down before they get too out of control, which might sound familiar to some of the dialogue we had about the counter to Pluton and having the blueprints fall into the wrong hands. So what I'm saying is that I think Vegapunk Punk had to get the idea for a self-destruct button from somewhere, like his mentor that may have built Pluton. So I think that the blueprints not only tell you how to build Pluton, but also how to destroy it by hitting some type of self-destruct button. If Pluton fell into the wrong hands or simply went out of control, there was probably some built-in way to destroy it or shut it off before things got too bad. And that's why the blueprints can be both the blueprints for the actual Pluton, but also the counter, by showing you exactly how to stop it. And the way that the stories of Frankie and Vegapunk could potentially combine like this seems so Oda to me, and would potentially give Frankie's backstory and purpose even much more grandeur than it already has. It's like Pluton and its underground railroad is just a much grander version of Tom's goal with the sea train. So having Frankie be involved with that just makes perfect sense, and it would even be a perfect way to round out the idea that battleships and weapons are only bad if used for a bad purpose. And even an ancient weapon like Pluton can do immense good if used the right way. Well, if you liked what I had to say, please drop a like, and in exchange for a quick and easy click of the subscribe button, I promise to keep bringing you awesome content just like this. I can't believe that we're already at 10,000 subscribers, and as I mentioned earlier, I even opened up channel memberships so you can get emojis and connect with me directly, along with a ton of other great perks. It really does go a long way to helping me do this full time and bring you guys even more videos just like this one. Well, guys, in the meantime, please consider checking out one of these other two videos that you should probably already see on the screen. Later.